the saga of the summer in Detroit has kind of been this discussion over whether the city would grant a $60 million 10-year tax abatement to a big development project downtown that Bedrock is doing. Bedrock, the rocket company's billionaire Dan Gilbert, the huge high-rise going up at the old Hudson site. The big request suddenly approved by city council last week after weeks of putting off the vote. Member Young, a resolution. Council Member Young. Thank you, Mayor and President. I move to approve line on 22.4. Malachi Barrett's been covering the story for Bridge Detroit. This was the last scheduled meeting before the council was going to go on recess for about a month. So they're off until September now. And in that last meeting, there was a surprise vote on that tax abatement. Seven hours into the session at the very end, they did it. If you had the tenacity to stick around till the end, you found out that this was voted on. And I will not be able to support the vote today for this item. And the reason I cannot is because it was not noticed for the public mm -hmm. uh, that this was going to be a vote today. And for some of you all who make statements like you're selling your soul, that is not true. And I, you know, I really don't even want to hear that phrase again. So I absolutely oppose this. It should come before the public. It should not be walked on. We shouldn't, I think we're doing um, a disservice to our taxpayers. What I know when I ride down Woodward, I look at a half completed building and I know we got over 2,000 jobs wrapped into that and that's 2,000 lives and families that are affected by that and I take that very seriously. For us to not pass this, to not have this project and to have those folks out of a job, I don't think the answer to solving employment is to throw working families out of work. I quite honestly wanted to have an outside entity, a professor from a university, to come in and have the conversation around tax abatements and the Downtown Development Authority because a lot of times that part gets missed and it's extremely important in this conversation. I have decided to support the abatement that is before us for this project. Like all decisions I make on behalf of those that I represent, I've arrived at this point after careful research. So then, Bedrock had the votes five to four sliding through seemingly without much of a hitch. You know, I, I think that's why we probably saw the vote. I, I think those who were in favor of it felt that, okay, we, we have enough, we have a majority, let's, let's get this done. I suspect some people were really surprised to have this thing just kind of pop up and, and uh, and what about that? Is that how things usually work in city council? <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I mean, I think for people that have been advocating about this and, and trying to have conversations about it for you know weeks now, I mean, essentially the whole summer, for this to be a surprise vote, I think is, is really frustrating for them. The clerk will note that line item does pass. And um, Mr. Clerk, if you can move the two agreements, please. Through the Community Benefits Agreement, the city looks to be getting more out of this deal, enough to sway some on city council. Meanwhile, project execs were on hand to explain. The initial agreement said that 20% of our entire portfolio had to be affordable at 80% of the AMI. We are amending it to make the most far-reaching commitment to affordable housing ever made by a developer in the city with leadership from the council president, which is to say that going forward, 30% of everything that we do, all development, will be affordable at 60% of the AMI. AMI, that's Area Median Income. So more affordable housing thanks to the Hudson's abatement the tax break some Detroiters resent having to cover out of their own pockets. The uh, Gilbert site over at the old Hudson's site is not contingent upon him getting a $60 million tax giveaway. Uh, he's not going to pick up and leave. And so it's a red herring for people to be coming here talking about Oh, we're working on the site, we need to be working on the site and so forth and so on. He's not going anywhere. And if he does go somewhere, let him go. The major criticism is why are we giving a, a taxpayer funded handout to the richest man in Michigan? I mean, we heard that multiple times from council members and Detroiters who weighed in on the proposal. Dan Gilbert owns Bedrock. Uh, he's you know been at the forefront of a lot of you know major developments and, and changes in the city's downtown. And I think there's a feeling that there has to be some kind of limit on, on how much 
public support we give for for somebody who's you know independently very wealthy expect construction to continue to at least 2024 but the taxes won't kick in until 2032 this is kind of the underlying tension that i think is key to a lot of this when people see that the city is giving up taxpayer dollars to these wealthy businesses and regular Detroiters who are struggling to make ends meet do not have access to that same kind of tax break. You know, we all would love to get a, uh, a break on our property taxes for 10 years. Um, that's where the frustration comes in. And developers will say, this is necessary to make projects happen. But homeowners will say, why don't we have access to these same kinds of tools? Let's reform taxes in Detroit so that these are not necessary. Council uh, President Sheffield said in a perfect world, we would not have to use these tax abatements to make developments happen. But, you know, we're not living in a perfect world. Yeah, it doesn't sound like we'll be in a perfect world anytime soon with this no, stuff. No, definitely not.